What's up guys, on this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the Interactive Brokers web portal. I'll break this video down into different steps. I'll add chapters, you can skip around, just look at the timeline down below. If I'm able to provide any value, then definitely consider hitting that subscribe button, ringing that bell, and smashing that like button. Now, I don't wanna waste any of your time because we are gonna go through a lot of information. So let's dive right into it. Part one, how to open an account with Interactive Brokers. To do this, you're gonna to wanna to use the link in the video description because it helps the channel out gonna send you to this page here you can click on open account now be aware there are a lot of different account types that you can open with interactive brokers this brokerage is offered in over 200 countries it has so many different account types but primarily you're looking at three different kinds you're looking at a taxable account either cash or margin or you're looking at an IRA or a Roth IRA and if you're a minor you're looking at setting up a USGMA account now I personally have a Roth IRA but I have a taxable account elsewhere this account with Interactive Brokers is used for long-term investing. Make sure to use that link in the video description to open up an account. You press on that red button, you submit your application, and then you're done. And then you'll be able to log into the web portal where you'll see the true powers of Interactive Brokers and why it's one of the top rated brokerages in the world. Part two is the home screen for Interactive Brokers. Here, you're gonna be able to see what your portfolio is worth, the performance of your portfolio, your positions, some top news, and look at your watch list. You'll also be able to deposit and withdraw funds from your portfolio here. Although I do recommend keeping the money in there for as long as possible to invest for the long term and let compound interest do its thing. Now, like I said, I have a Roth IRA. I opened them up with Interactive Brokers not too long ago. And this month, I'm up 41.12%. And as you can see, here is your value of your overall portfolio your settled cash, your buying power, your top portfolio positions, some market overview, your watch list, cryptocurrencies, and recent news. If you scroll back up to the top, here you can deposit or withdraw money. And if you click on performance, then it's gonna show you a rate of return, which in the last month, it's 32.83%. Same information down below. That's all that I need to talk about with the home screen, but there's so much more with interactive brokers. One of the biggest thing about opening a brokerage account is buying and selling stocks. So that's what we're gonna talk about next. We'll pick any stock. We'll pick a stock that I don't own. We'll look at VTI. So to do that, we're gonna type in the ticker above. So we're gonna hit VTI. And like I said, you can use so many different exchanges. Let's stick to the American exchange. In this case is the ART, A-R-C-A. It's usually gonna be the first one that's listed here. And we're gonna click on it. Now we got three options. Since we're looking at buying a stock, we're gonna click the stock tab we'll dive into options and options chain later so we'll click on that a few moments later all right here we are this is vti now if we wanted to buy it all we have to do is click buy over here if we click on that we can set an order so let's say we wanted to buy one share we'll change our quantity over to one now there are two different order types that you need to be cons uh, familiar with when buying stock it's a limit and a market order and there's also a profit taker and a stop loss, which we'll dive into. So the difference between a market and a limit order is with a limit order, you're putting a price cap on what you're willing to pay for that stock. So if the stock is currently trading at $198, let's say the max you're willing to buy this is at $195. This order will not go through unless it's below or at $195. Market on the other hand, is saying that you're willing to pay for the stock at current market price. So it can be $199 and you would get that order fulfilled. The time and force, you basically have two options. You have day and good till cancel. Day is in market hours. So you have from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. If the order does not get filled then, then this order will be canceled and you're gonna to have to submit another one the next day. You can modify your day order to include extended hours. If you hit this outside RTH, which is regular trading hours, you'll look to get that order filled in pre-market or after hours trading. The other type of order that you can put in, the time and force is good till cancel. And basically that is saying that I want this order to remain on the books until it gets fulfilled or I cancel that order. It's up to you what you want to do, but those are your options. So let's say I wanted to proceed by buying a good till cancel that works in extended hours 
for one share of VTI at a limit price of $195. You would do that, you would submit your buy order, and then you would get this confirmation here once you have reviewed and submitted your buy order. To cancel or to modify, you would hit this trade tab, you would go to your orders and trades, and then here you can see here, I have a VTI order. If I was to click on that, I could modify or cancel. I'm gonna cancel because I don't actually wanna submit that order. And then I would hit okay. Let's go over another example. So what we're looking at is Nvidia stock now, and let's pick some ranges. So let's say a good time to take profits would be at this triple peak right here at $190. A good time to buy the stock would be at this support here, $140. And a good time to stop out will be right here at this support at $120. So what we're looking to do is buy the stock at $140. So we're gonna hit buy. We're gonna do a buy order on the video. Let's say we're gonna do one share at a limit price of $140. And we're gonna do good till cancel and outside normal hours. Next, we can add a profit taker. So we'll go down here, we'll select profit taker. And I said that that was at $190. So I'll do 190. And the same thing, day and or good to cancel and outside regular trading hours. Basically what this is saying is that I'm willing to buy the stock at 140. Once I get that share, I wanna sell it at 190. If it gets to that price, I wanna take profits. And then you can also do a stop loss. So I'll click on that. And we said $120 is where we wanted to stop out. And we modify that to good till cancel as well. Now this is saying, I wanna buy at $140. I wanna take profits at 190. If the stock falls after I buy it and it gets to 120, I wanna cut my losses and I wanna sell my share. So I submit a limit buy order to buy the share. I have a profit taking uh, limit order and I have a stop loss in place for this stock. I am covered on both sides of the trade. That is a nice way to set up for a swing trade. Let's get into the charts and what you can do on the web portal. So let's just stay on NVIDIA and this is a web portal so it's not for heavy duty technical analysis but you can do some technical analysis on here. Now you can change the way your chart looks. I highly recommend you just use candles but you can change this to a line or an area if you want just by clicking on this little button. Let's go back to candles. You can change your time frame or what each candle is. You can do from seconds to minutes to hours to days to weeks. We're gonna do the one day. We're gonna keep it here. Now on the chart, if you use your mouse, you can zoom in and out. If you click and drag, you can move left and right. We'll zoom back in here. And that's how you're gonna take a look at candles. What you can also do is you can add some indicators. So we scroll back in, we can go to indicators. Now there are two different indicators that I like to see. The first one is a lower study and it's the relative strength index. And I like looking at the default setting. So here's our relative strength index down below on the chart. Another indicator that I like to use is the 200 day moving average. So if I type in moving average, I come over here, it's gonna bring in a moving average. Now it's not default set for 200 days. Right now it's a nine day SMA. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit settings. We're gonna go to inputs. We're gonna change the length to 200 and we're gonna change the smoothing length to 200 as well. And now I have the 200 day moving average on the chart because I am using the daily candle, but if I was to use the four hour candle, then it's the 200 four hour candle. I don't know. If I was to use the weekly, then it's the 200 week moving average. The same thing with the RSI. It's all relative to the time frame you're looking at. Something else you can do is you can hit the expand to get you to full screen. And then if you hit escape, it's gonna bring you back to the stock page. Part four, stock research. All right, there is a ton of stuff here. I'm not gonna lie, it's intensive. So we're gonna switch it up. We're gonna go to a different stock. Let's look up um, Tesla. So we'll click on the stock and it's gonna bring you to the stock page. Now there are two ways to get to the research function. You can hit research or you can hit research here. Let's just go to research. All right, there's a lot here. The first thing is overview and this is gonna give you some of the key data all in one tab. So you can get the key ratios, you're gonna get the company information 
get the ESG rating, the financials, the dividends, the analyst ratings, the forecast EPS, the news, the events, the ownership, the competitors, the social sentiment, all like real quick right here in one page. Pretty cool. And then if you wanted to dive into some of the more important stuff, for instance, if you wanted to see some more of the key ratios, you hit key ratios here or you can click here. It's gonna take you to the same place. And then here you're gonna see some of the key multiples, price of earnings, price to book, price to sales, price to free cash flow, price to equity, to so much stuff, the peg ratio, the EPS, a ton of stuff. Um, if you click on any of these, it's gonna drop down and it's gonna show you how it compares to the industry, to some other stocks, what its current ratio is, current multiple, compared to its five year average. Um, and then it's also gonna give you that five year trend. Now this is kind of cool and I love looking at PE multiples compared to the five year average to try to get a better understanding of how the stock is valued. Now Tesla is not the best stock to be looking at key ratios for because it's relatively new, has been crazy over the last five years. So that's not really good data to use because those numbers might be outliers. But if you were looking at a Google or an Apple, these numbers would make so much more sense. They're gonna be closer to the average. But that's neither here or there. I'm not trying to teach you how to analyze a stock, how to evaluate a company right now. I'm just trying to show you what's on web portal and how maybe some of this information can be valuable to you. But nevertheless, there are a ton of key ratios here. If we proceed down the list, we can take a look at dividends. There's no dividend history on Tesla. So maybe I should have picked a different stock, but I already know what's gonna be here. You're gonna look at the dividend history. It's gonna show you what the payout ratio is. It's gonna show you if the dividend's going up or down over time. The impact is the next thing. This is more about ESG. I don't really care about ESG. Some people do, I don't. Then here's another big one. This one is important. This is something you should be looking at when investing in a company. There are three different um, financial statements. You have your income, you have your balance sheet and you have your cash flow statement. All three of these are included in interactive brokers. If you wanted to go in between them, you would just click up top here. We'll go back to the income and you can take a look at this quarterly or annually. These are, this is all information that's provided in SEC filings, either a 10Q or a 10K. And if you were to click on something like revenue, it would show you how revenue has been over the last quarters if, because I'm in the quarterly. But if I was to click annual and do that same thing, it's then gonna show you me the revenue growth per year. Good information to see, good information to have, important information. So all the financial statements are gonna be included in this tab. Then we can also get to analyst ratings. And Interactive Brokers does a really good job with this because you get to see all of the tip rank stuff. So here you're gonna get the consensus, if it's a buy, if it's a sell, based on analysts out there, what their price targets are, where their rating histories have been, the recommendation details, the current versus the history, the analyst action log. So anytime there's a, a, a a downgrade or an upgrade of a stock, it's gonna show up here as well. And then if you were to go to the tip ranks ranking, you're gonna be able to see what the analyst name is, what they have, what their recommendation is, and how they rank against other analysts in that industry. So for instance, the last one was John Murphy of Bank of American Securities. He's got a pretty good rank, he's got a hold, he's got a 275, it's been maintained, and it happened today. And if you were to look on John Murphy, you can see his success rate, how he ranks, and you can click on the full profile if you wanted to as well. Um, a lot of information here. And if you go to sentiment, the same kind of deal. Get a average price target, where the high is, where the low is, because you always get some of those analysts that are just just not making any sense. And some other information here as well. The next tab is analyst forecast. And this is gonna be more about financial stuff, like earnings per share, what they project earnings to share per share to be in the future, what they project gross margin, net income, cash flow, all that stuff. What, what are they projecting? And you can also break that down per quarterly or annually as well, just like with financial statements. Then here we have news. So you can click on articles and then read them on the right here um, real quick. And it's, it's really nice the way they break it out. It's very clean. It's very easy to read. Um, it's pretty cool. 
then in ownership you're going to be able to see how much institutions own of this how much insiders own of this you're also going to be able to see their history and their weighting for instance you can see that vanguard has 6.48 percent valued at close to 46 billion dollars at 205 million shares you can also take a look at the trade log so you can take a look at institutions whether they're buying or selling based on the date these are 13 f's and same with insiders um, for instance you can see that elon musk has 14.73 percent stake in the company valued at close to 132 billion dollars at 465 million shares and then you can use social sentiment which is the last thing i don't really pay much attention to this as well this is basically how it's rating in social media and then the other stuff short selling technical insight there's not a ton of information there so we're going to skip through all of that stuff and that wraps it up for the research portion of the web portal as you can see it can be quite extensive part five fractional shares now with interactive brokers if you don't have enough money to buy one share of a stock let's say we don't have 191 dollars to buy tesla right now but we would love to buy at this price we can do so let's say that we're willing to buy half of a share so around 95 dollars worth we can do the quantity we can change that to 0.5 and then you're going to get this precautionary warning that your order result will result in a fractional share you hit accept you go through the same process of buying a share and then you submit your buy order and you can buy a fractional share in any stock you wish that I believe it has to be on American exchange. I could be wrong, but you can buy fractional shares on interactive brokers if you wish. Part six, education. All right, so interactive brokers has the trader workstation, they have the web portal, they have international stuff, they have event trader, they have a ton of different stuff out there and they have a bunch of videos to help you through the process and to help teach you be a better investor and or trader basically they're going to go over everything that they have to offer on all of their different trading platforms to get to the educational tab you can watch all these videos if you want here it is i just wanted to point this out that there's a ton of information in the education you have short video videos you have the traders academy you have the student trading lab the glossary the calendar the insight blog the quant blog podcast webinar there's a ton of different stuff just wanted to point that out next let's talk about options which i love to trade so we're going to go over how to buy call options and we'll also talk about spreads and how to customize some stuff on interactive brokers web portal so to get started we got to pick a stock and we're just going to go to the stock itself so we're gonna to go to LMT and we're gonna hit stock. Now here we are, I'm gonna change this back to the one day. So we're gonna go back over here to a one day candle. And this stock dropped off of a fake tweet from an account that was falsely verified through that $8 rule on Twitter that was just implemented to get that blue check, basically dropping the stock off of something that wasn't real. So I think there's a good chance that we could bounce and try to get back to prior levels. So I'm actually gonna zoom in a little bit more because this is more of a short-term trade. And we're gonna go to the 15 minutes and I'm gonna show you how to buy a call option. But first, I wanna get a price. So let's just say we think that the stock can get back to right here at a $490 or $480. So that's my range. Keep that range in mind because we're also gonna talk about how to do a spread. So to get into options, there are two different ways. There's a simplified way, and then there's the options chain. The options chain way is the way real traders trade options. The simplified way is something that you shouldn't really do, but if you're really new and you need something that's super simple or you already know what you're gonna trade, you can do that. Let me show you the difference. We'll start with the simplified way. You type in the ticker, you click on the ticker, and then you hit options. So now, what's our expiration? Well, it's sometime in November because these are only months. So if you pick November, you're gonna have different options or expiration dates show up below. Next, we need to pick the strike. So we said uh, $480, I have no idea what it trades for. We'll click on this $480 for this week. 
And then what it's going to do is it's going to bring me to the quote of that option. It's going to show me what it's currently trading at and what it's trade at in the last day and the last week. Down here, you have the day and then you have the week. And basically, it's going to show me the prices that this call option has traded for. Now, if I wanted to buy it, I would hit buy and submit my order. I can also go through the options chain, which is the correct way to do this. So we'll go to LMT. And then here you have your quote details and your options chain over here on the top right. Also, I don't know why I didn't do it, but when you type in the ticker, it has that stock options or options chain button. You would click on the options chain. Now let's explain what we have here. So our view is calls and puts. Calls on the left, puts on the right, your strike is in the middle. You have your exchange is smart, so it's gonna get you the best exchange. Then you have your expiration dates here. You can click on any expiration date and it's gonna change your calls and puts because that's what we have displayed. We're gonna go back to that short term option for November 18th. And we're gonna wait for this to load. Now this is the default columns you're gonna see. All you're getting is price history or current price. You're just getting the bid ask spread and the last price shown in the default setting. So for $480 strike, the, the bid is $65, the ask is $85, and the last is $75. That's not enough information. I want to see more. To show more columns, you can click on that little button there, and you're gonna hit manage columns. And it's really easy to add them. We're gonna add delta, we're gonna add gamma, we're gonna add theta, we're gonna add, I don't, I don't need to add Vega. We're gonna add open interest and we're gonna add volume. And then we're gonna close this and we're gonna hit done. Now all that information is now here. It's important to see what Delta is. It's important to see what open interest and volume is. And then it's sometimes helpful to see Gamma and Theta. Vega is sometimes good as well. I just blasted through that in this video, but it's it's worthwhile looking at because it's gonna give you a better idea of how implied volatility is working against you or for you, depending on what kind of option strategy you're using. So now if we go back to the options chain and we look at the 480, you can see that it's $65, $85, you can see that the bid is $65, the ask is $85, and the last is $75. Delta is 0.08, so it's very unlikely that this is gonna end up in the money. And the open interest, and I don't know if this is because it's after hours, is zero. I'm sure during market hours that number is gonna change. But if I wanted to buy this, all I have to do is hit buy. And then this screen on the right is gonna pop up. And once it's done loading, you're gonna get a PL graph. You're gonna see your delta, your gamma, your Greeks essentially. It's gonna show you what your max loss, your break even, and max return is once it's done loading and calculating all that stuff. And to change your price, when you go to the actual order, you can set your limit and you can change your limit price to be whatever you want it to be. Maybe you want it to be at the bid price, so 65, and your time and force is day or good to cancel. You can do the profit taker and the stop loss as well, and you can submit your buy order, but I'm not gonna actually do that right now. So that's how you would buy a call option. To buy a put option, it's the same thing. Now, let's say you wanted to look at some of the spreads. You can do a calendar spread, a vertical spread, or a diagonal spread. I don't buy spreads this way. But let's say we wanted to get into that 480, 490 spread on LMT for this expiration. We have the correct expiration selected. Now we gotta go to the row of 480. So here's our 480. And every strike price increases by $2.50. So as we go down here, we go from 480, is our long leg and our short legs 482.5, 480, 485, 480, 490. That's the one. So we'll click on that and we'll wait for the thing to load on the top right. And then we can see what the bid and ask is here. So that's gonna be 65 minus 10. We would look to get this order filled at 55. So we go on our order, we would buy one at a limit price of 0 0.55. And we would submit the order. And as you can see here, we have a buy and a sell. This is a vertical spread on LMT. It's a called debit spread. 
and here's our PL for that position. And once this loads as well, you would get your max loss, your break even, and your max return. That's how you can do it by this vertical spread view. But you can also do it by the normal view. So if you hit go back to calls and puts, if we close out of this, Basically, what we want to do is we want to buy our long leg, a $480 call option, and then we want to sell our short leg of the $490 call option. So all you got to do is you go to 480, and you're going to click on buy, and then you're going to go to 490, and you're going to click on the bid, which will be red, and it'll be sell. Now we have that same order over here on the right of the screen as well. We would review it, change our price that we're willing to pay for it, and submit that order, and it would pop up in the order book. And then when you actually get into it, and it's fulfilled, it will show up on your portfolio. Now that's how you buy and sell options on the web portal for interactive brokers. Next, let's take a look at scanners. So up on the right under your research tab, you have your market scanners and there are a ton of different scanners here. You have top gainers, top losers. You have um, highest open volume. You have your 52 week high, your 52 week low, your high PE ratio, low PE ratio, um, shares held by insiders, ascending, the price, some technical stuff. There are a ton of different scanners. You can run the scanner, take a look at a stock. It's gonna populate with a bunch of different stocks. You click on one, it's gonna take you to the chart. That's how you're gonna run scanners on Interactive Brokers web portal. From here, you can also take a look at your watch list. And for instance, I have this short-term trades watch list here of some stocks. If you were to click on the three bars over here and add edit symbols, you can add more stocks to the list or remove them. These watch lists will also show up on the home page under your watch list. There'll be a little drop down where you can change your watch list. Next, let's talk about Event Trader. Now, this is unique to interactive brokers. This is something that no other brokerage really offers. And this is trading based off of binary options contracts, binary events. For instance, if you hit trade and then you go to Event Trader, this is the screen that's going to pop up and it's going to ask you questions. It's going to be yes or no. And you can basically make a bet. The first one here is will E mini E mini S and P 500 close above 3975 on November 15th? Yes or no. You can make a wager and you can bet on that binary outcome. That's all I'm going to talk about for your event trader. I'll save diving into this in more detail on another video. I just wanted to point it out. Now, I think I covered the majority of what's on the web portal for interactive brokers. I mean, like I said, if you have any questions, comment down below. I'll do my best to try to help you out. Consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that notification bell. And also do me a huge favor. If you're going to sign up with interactive brokers, use that affiliate link in the bio. It helps with the channel growth and I really do appreciate it. Now there's going to be a dedicated playlist to interactive brokers. I'm going to go over the trader workstation. I'm going to go over the event trader and I'm going to go over some other stuff as well. Like this on the mobile app. It's going to be a lot of stuff, a lot of reviews with interactive brokers because I want to try to help you the best through this process of starting investing and trading in the markets. And if you're going to use interactive brokers, which is a great brokerage, I want to provide you guys with some content that you can fall back on to help with that journey. But that wraps it up for this video. I thank you so much for your time. This was a long video. I know a lot of information, but I'll see you on the next one. See ya.